Namaste and welcome to the video course on watershed management. In module 2, the on sustainable watershed approach and watershed management practices. In lecture number 7, today we will discuss about watershed management in arid regions and strategic planning. So, the important topics covered in this lecture include watershed management practices in arid and semi arid regions, various watershed management strategies, and we will discuss a case study. Some of the important keywords in today's lecture include watershed management practices, uh, strategies, arid region, semi arid region. So, now let us discuss the watershed management practices in arid and semi arid regions. So, if you critically analyze the various land uh, say land use or land physiography all over the world, we can see that the dry lands cover more than 60 percent of the earth surface. So, this 60 percent means not all the area is all 60 percent is totally dry, but say some classification says dry lands cover more than 60 percent of their surface and uh, arid zones describes this arid zone means arid zones are described as a part of the dry lands and have most severe climatic conditions. So, in the 60 percent some way or another way of say water shortage is there. So, that is why uh, we call this as dry, dry lands and out of this say the arid uh, zones are described as part of the dry lands and uh, the major distinguishing feature of the arid zone. Uh, includes arid zone has low rainfall say most of the time average annual rainfall will be less than 500 millimeter or the aridity index will be less than 0 0.2. So, aridity index is used to identify the arid regions arid lands uh, in the dry lands region. So, where whenever this index is less than 0 0.2 we classify the, the land as arid zone and then with more than 50 percent inter annual variability. So, in this arid regions we can see that even though the average annual rainfall may be say 200 or 300 millimeter, but there is drastic variation in the say 50 percent inter annual variability uh, takes place more than 50 percent. So, this makes difference in terms of nature of ecosystem, socio-economic environments and challenges for sustainability. So, we have discussed the various issues related to sustainability. So, we can see that uh, in these arid regions it is so fragile ecosystem. So, a uh, lot of challenges will be there to say uh, to when we discuss about watershed management in terms of socio economic and environmental aspects or land use aspects lot of challenges will be there. So, some of the peculiarities of this arid and semi arid regions include high winds and uh, solar regimes and uh, this further increase the effect of rainfall variability. So, these are some of the important say issues or important aspects as far as arid and semi arid regions are con considered. So, arid region will be within the say when the rainfall is less than 500 mm. So, semi arid region say we can say that it will be slightly more than 500 mm say maybe up to 750 mm. Uh, average annual rainfall. So, but most of the time the issues related to arid or semi arid regions uh, will be somewhere another way similar. So, with this uh, perspective let us look into various issues water related issues or land related issues as far as arid regions are considered. So, here whole complexities say what we discussed as far as arid regions are concerned there are so many complexities land related complexities the water related complexities. So, all this makes a fragile ecosystem in which small disturbances may cause great loss to the sustainability which are sometimes irreversible. So, even if say for example, say a particular area the average annual rainfall is say 300 mm. So, even there is a small changes taking place with respect to this availability then there will be lot of problems they say like a severe drought problems, severe water shortage problems there will be so many problems. So, uh, in this hot arid zones of uh, say here uh, we can see that uh, say the small changes create lot of uh, problems and hence 
these uh, hot arid zones are economically and environmentally disadvantaged with uh, unique problems. So, for uh, most of the arid or semi arid regions say the problems whenever we look into various issues with uh, watershed related issues then you can see that there will be this issues will be unique. So, the ecosystem of these zones are highly fragile with a larger risk that cause. So, as I mentioned even small changes can create lot of problems to the ecosystem and the severe impediments to uh, development programs. So, that is the another issue. So, uh, say of course, there is problem related to land, then problems related to water. So, the total resource related problems are there. So, within these constraints, say when since the ecosystems are so fragile. So, uh, as far as development programs are concerned, there will be severe problems, we have to be very careful in the planning. So, uh, of the total land area in the world, uh, we can classify about 18.8 percent uh, say as uh, arid zones and these arid zones are diverse in terms of climate, soils, vegetation, animals and the lifestyles and the activities of the people. So, when we discuss about the arid zones, there is say unique problems are there and then um, say arid or semi arid regions say its problems related to water or land or say soil erosion problem due to wind or other related issues. So, the problems will be unique and then uh, say even a small change can create a lot of uh, problems as far as the, uh, the economic planning or the watershed management plans are uh, considered. So, as far as arid and semi arid regions are concerned. Uh, so, uh, little but uh, variability in rain rainfall and presence of dis distinctive periods of droughts are characteristics of these uh, areas. So, often uh, say uh, we call sometimes drought or sometimes aridity. So, but uh, say as far as the stems are concerned there will be lot of confusion. So, as far as a drought is uh, concerned we can define it as a departure from average or normal conditions that means the shortage of water adversely uh, impacts on functioning of the ecosystems and uh, uh, the people of the area. So, that is uh, a drought, but, but as far as aridity is concerned the average conditions of limited rainfall and water supplies uh, there will not be much departure from the whatever say the, the, the available in that particular region. So, the, this is the difference between a uh, drought uh, and uh, the aridity. So, according to the conditions we have to use the term uh, appropriately whether uh, either as drought or aridity. So, now as far as the world is concerned the extent of arid zones in different continents are listed here. So, for example, Africa say uh, uh, say 1175 uh, million hectares. So, uh, say for example, uh, about 46.1 percent of the total area, area we can classify as arid. So, Asia is concerned about 35.5 percent, Australia 11.9 percent, Europe only 0.4 percent, North America 3.3 percent, South America 2.8 percent. So, like this say the extent of arid zone in different continents are varying. So, according to the space I mean from uh, different continents to different continents or say one country to another country lot of variation is, uh, are there as far as the uh, arid zone uh, statistics is uh, concerned. Uh, so, say for example, India is concerned when we discuss about India say hot arid regions of India uh, say uh, cover about 31.7 million hectares involving uh, mainly in 7 states including Rajasthan, Gujarat, Punjab, Haryana, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Maharashtra. So, uh, about 11.8 percent of the country is under uh, hot arid environments and the arid regions of Rajasthan, Gujarat, Punjab and Haryana say which is uh, the constitute the so called third research and this accounts uh, say uh, more than 89 percent of the total hot arid uh, regions of India. So, here we have to differentiate the hot arid regions and uh, say normal uh, arid regions. So, here say as far as India is concerned the arid regions uh, distribution is shown in this table. Say for example, in Rajasthan about uh, uh, say 19.61 million hectares and uh, 61 percent. So, Gujarat 19.6 percent, Punjab and Haryana 9 percent, Andhra Pradesh 7 percent, Karnataka 3 percent, Maharashtra 0 0.4 percent uh, like this. So, this uh, shows the statistic as far as distribution of arid regions uh, as far as India is concerned. So, uh, 
so far we have seen the uh, the distribution of uh, irreligions throughout the world and uh, India's concerns. So, uh, we can see that a uh, lot of variations from one uh, state to another state or from one country to another country. Uh, but as far as the problems of the, the heredity or the drought are concerned, say uh, the land related or water related uh, problems uh, for this most of these regions are unique. So, that way uh, say we can uh, say whenever we discuss in terms of watershed management, uh, most of these issues are common as far as the, the, uh, the most of the arid or semi arid regions are uh, concerned. So, uh, now let us see what are the main issues as far as watershed management issues are concerned, what are the main issues in arid and semi arid uh, regions. So, in arid and semi arid regions, so some of the major issues uh, include uh, desertification, uh, land degradation, drought affects uh, more than uh, say about 2 billion people throughout the world and the situation might worsen due to the climate change. So, now, now, now in the recent, recently we are discussing about the climate change. So, when the climate change uh, say issues are concerned you can see that um, the temperature rises and then the say even though some, some regions the rainfall may increase, but say overall say the total available rainfall will be obtained in a few events. So, that way the drought problems will be increasing. So, and then uh, say uh, the most of the, the issues as far as arid or semi arid regions there will be the more problems uh, as far as the, the uh, temperature or as far as the water availability is concerned. So, as far as uh, arid and semi arid regions are concerned 2.6 billion people are affected by uh, desertification, desertification and, um, and the population growth as, uh, as per 1990 is concerned 18.5% in dry land areas are this the growth is there and the GDP is concerned in dry land areas gross domestic product uh, in areas is about 50 percent lower than in non uh, dry land area. So, this shows the economic status uh, statistic or economic status of the people of the, the um, uh, arid or semi arid regions or the dry land regions. So, you can see that compared to non, uh, non dry land areas say the uh, GDP uh, is 50 percent uh, lower. Uh, so, now in uh, the natural regeneration of vegetation cover and soil uh, in arid areas takes 5 to 10 times longer than in favorable areas with um, greater and more uh, regular rainfall. So, when we compare uh, the, the arid regions and non arid regions same we have already seen the uh, GDP. Uh, so, similarly say when we are trying to regenerate the vegetation or when we are um, intervening in terms of watershed management uh, practices, then we can see that uh, say we have to put more efforts, uh, we have to uh, say wait for long time to see the effects. So, about 5 to 10 times longer than in favorable areas uh, say with the greater and more uh, re regular rainfall. So, these are the main issues as far as uh, watershed management is concerned in arid uh, and uh, semi arid uh, regions. Also, uh, the main agricultural land use uh, types in uh, dry land areas uh, say like a crop land, irrigated land and uh, range land. So, uh, there are lot of issues as far as the agricultural uh, area is concerned. So, different land deg degradation problems uh, occur depending upon the type of land use uh, in the uh, arid or semi arid regions. Uh, 55 percent of the gross value of the food is produced under rain fed agriculture in the um, same uh, arid and semi arid regions. Uh, crop land in uh, say dry rain fed areas is used primarily by smaller uh, small holder farmers to cultivate fields uh, and cash, cash crops. So, um, uh, as far as agriculture is concerned most of the areas in um, the arid or semi arid regions same uh, about 55 per, more than 55 percent is uh, rain fed agriculture. So, very uh, few areas are having the, the irrigation facilities. So, due to all these reasons the agriculture practice the agriculture is concerned uh, uh, major issues are there which uh, we have to address uh, whenever we discuss um, in terms of uh, watershed management uh, practices. Uh, so, now within this perspective of the various issues uh, which we have discussed so far as far as the arid and semi arid regions are concerned, let us see uh, what are the major challenges as far as the watershed management uh, is concerned. So, some of, some of the important challenges are uh, listed here. Uh, 
So, uh, like uh, uh, the uh, uh, land is concerned, uh, the soil is infertile, then uh, lack of water for irrigation, uh, then expansion uh, of uh, cultivated uh, and a diminishing of uh, natural vegetation cover. So, um, uh, say most of the area, say uh, the people are trying to cultivate, uh, so the fields are in developing stage and most of the natural vegetations are diminishing and uh, then insufficient uh, amounts of organic uh, material and nutrients. So, th this creates a uh, lot of uh, problems as far as the plant growth is concerned. Then um, in many of the areas, the cultivated areas, burning of uh, organic materials uh, like uh, harvest uh, residue, uh, uh, brush fires, etc. Then uh, soil erosion. So, uh, this is another major issue as far as the uh, arid regions are concerned. So, mainly in arid regions, the soil erosion is as we discussed in the last lecture, it will be mainly due to the, the wind uh, force. So, wind velocity. So, uh, so, this whenever the high wind comes, so, most of the say the this uh, soil will be especially in sandy in nature and the sand will be uh, say, um, uh, say transported with the wind and it will be deposited in some, some far away places. And then uh, some of the other challenges uh, say as far as the arid and semi arid regions are concerned free grazing. So, um, there is no clear and uh, uh, land use uh, rights and uh, whatever existing forests only sc scanty forests are there and uh, whatever existing forests are concerned uh, deforestation is a major issue in uh, most of the arid and semi arid regions. And then all this leads to poverty uh, and socio-economic problems as far as the uh, people residing in these uh, regions. So, these are some of the uh, major challenges as far as the arid and semi-arid regions concerned in terms of the, uh, the watershed management plans uh, which we can consider uh, for these uh, areas. So, now uh, with the, let us uh, discuss the various issues uh, um, or uh, with respect to the various challenges as far as arid and semi arid regions are concerned, how we can sort it or say solve these issues or uh, what kind of uh, watershed management within the perspective of watershed management uh, practices, how what we can do as far as the uh, uh, arid and semi arid regions are concerned. So, now in this slide we can see the watershed management in arid regions. So, here uh, earlier we discussed the integrated watershed management uh, practices uh, project or um, the approaches. Um, so, the, say if we can integrate various aspects uh, which we discussed earlier. So, then uh, the, it will be a, a good solution as far as the arid regions are concerned. So, this IWM or integrated watershed management uh, uh, approach provides a framework to integrate natural resource management with the community uh, livelihoods in a sustainable way. So, this is our um, um, main en emphasis as far as the uh, watershed management uh, in arid regions are considered. So, uh, within the perspective of IWM, um, we try to address issues of degradation of natural resources, soil erosion, uh, landslides, floods, frequent uh, droughts and uh, desertification and low agricultural productivity, poor water quantity and quality and poor access to lands and related uh, resources from an IWM uh, perspective, integrated um, watershed management perspective. So, most of the issues, most of the things which we discussed, um, whatever we are trying to integrate uh, various aspects as far as watershed management is concerned. So, if we can integrate uh, say like uh, land related, water related, uh, or the uh, pe people related, then uh, say we can see that um, uh, we can have better uh, uh, say watershed management plans as far as the arid regions are concerned. So, as we discussed earlier compared to normal area, the, the ecosystems of the arid regions are so fragile. So, uh, we should be very careful uh, when we uh, try to make plans uh, within the perspective of integrated watershed management uh, say as far as the uh, arid regions are concerned. So, some of the important uh, IWM practices possible uh, are listed here in this slide. So, uh, the watershed management in arid regions. So, first one is um, uh, see th this um, uh, sustainable land management practices. So, so, we can start with the mapping of sustainable land management practices and then on-site and off-site interactions say 
as we discuss say for example uh, if um, uh, dust storms takes place that uh, uh, originates uh, from a location and that can threaten people and livelihood uh, close by, uh, by but uh, quite far away also. So, it is not only a, a, a localized issue, but to far distance also the problems can be there. And then uh, also uh, say as far as the uh, arid regions are concerned or semi arid regions are concerned, lot of interaction will be there um, between highlands and lowell or lowlands. So, people in uh, rural areas are dependent on ecosystem services provided by highland areas. Say for example, if this is a highland or this is the highland. So, then we can see that um, uh, say uh, where if, if we can do through watershed uh, management practice or rainwater harvesting, if we can uh, harvest lot of water in this hilly region. So, that will be a source of water to the lowland areas. So, the highlands give uh, water for to the surrounding uh, lowlands. So, like that uh, we can um, uh, look into the, the highland lowland interactions. And then uh, the uh, next thing is say there can be regional interactions and uh, rural urban linkages. So, uh, you can see that um, say whatever products are made in um, agriculture products made in um, rural area that will be transported to the urban areas and from urban areas uh, many of the consumable things will be transported to the, the rural areas. And then uh, participation and uh, community involvement. So, these are some of the, the as we discussed earlier as far as integrated watershed management plan is concerned, people participation is very important and community involvement is also very important. Uh, so, that uh, we can look for uh, sustainable uh, uh, say watershed management or sustainable land management. So, uh, when we look into the various problems and various issues, we can see that um, uh, say many of these uh, issues uh, we, we have to we should have a multi phased approach or multi functional approach. So, a multi functional approach and multi functional use helps to reduce the risk uh, through uh, diversification uh, to promote synergies that produce added economic, ecological or social value and to preserve and strengthen the uh, ecosystem services. So, only issue is that the ecosystem is so fragile. So, we should be very careful uh, while intervening in, in any of these uh, arid or uh, semi arid regions. So, as far as watershed management plans uh, we have to study in detail and then uh, see we have to map the sustainable land management practices and then uh, we have to start uh, we have to st uh, we'll say put appropriate plans uh, by considering all the issues uh, of the considered uh, watershed. So, now uh, let us discuss in detail about the sustainable land management. So, sustainable land management in a re regions helps to uh, increase food security uh, primarily for uh, small holders. So, uh, so, small holder farmers. So, we have seen that um, most of the people living uh, in uh, arid regions are small holder uh, farmers. So, our, the main aim of sustainable land management is to increase the food security and then uh, uh, provide uh, local energy. Local energy say uh, for example, in times of solar energy, wind energy etcetera. Uh, then provide uh, local fresh and clean water. So, this we can achieve through say, um, say uh, locally based uh, rainwater harvesting or um, uh, uh, say uh, local uh, say wells uh, which are uh, which obtain water through um, say recharges. Then mitigate uh, soil degradation. So, soil degradation is a major issue uh, as far as the and the land is concerned. So, the sustainable land management practices we have to mitigate the various uh, soil degradation problems then increase the soil moisture. So, uh, we can see that um, say when the, when the soil moisture is improved then the, the agricultural yield will be more or we can say more land we can use for agricultural purposes. So, that way uh, so increase in soil moisture is uh, very important. So, we have to look in terms of soil development and uh, uh, functions uh, as far as the, the in terms of sustainable uh, land management is concerned. And then enhance primary, uh, primary production and nutrient cycling. So, this is also uh, very important as far as the sustainable land management is concerned. Uh, and then uh, preserve biodiversity at the farm level through agroforestry, intercropping, fallow and preservation of locally adapted seed.
So, these are some of the things uh, which you can be um, um, say we can plan as far as the sustainable land management is concerned. So, we, ha we have to see preserve the biodiversity then uh, say like uh, agriculture is concerned we can go for intercropping then uh, uh, preservation of locally uh, adapted uh, seeds. So, uh, now uh, say some of the important uh, things which we can uh, do as far as the sustainable land management in arid regions are concerned. Say we can uh, do uh, say many things related to uh, say to preserve soil moisture so that um, better um, plant production will take place. And then uh, we can increase the uh, primary production, say primary production say in terms of uh, water or other uh, other resources. Then uh, say if any river is there, we can regulate the river, lake and uh, groundwater levels, so that um, we can achieve sustainable land management uh, uh, in, in terms of watershed management practices. Then we can regulate uh, water discharge from highland to um, lowland areas, reducing floods and increasing the low flows in the in the streams or the channels are concerned and then uh, we can integrate the crop production and uh, livestock uh, production uh, so these are some of the uh, the as far as multifunctional land use concerned these are this is the core of uh, the multifunctional uh, land use that means integration of crop production and the livestock production so that um, the the uh, the income of the people will be increased so uh, the the, uh, the uh, through this we can achieve uh, the poverty elevation and uh, then better uh, um, say uh, sustainable land management is possible. So, now uh, say as we discussed uh, there are so many issues are there. So, as far as land use is concerned we can see that uh, it is uh, multifunctional. So, multifunctional means say uh, here we have to see that um, uh, the various issues as far as the land use is concerned say like production of food and uh, cash crops um, say uh, which one we have to give priority. So, accordingly we have to manage then uh, irrigated land. So, wherever possible possibility of irrigation is there. So, dry land areas with a um, high potential for ground water and surface water are used to cultivate crops, fruits uh, and uh, vegetables. So, we have to plan the agriculture in such a way that uh, whether there is any option for irrigation, whether a sufficient ground water we can pump it pump out and then uh, we can uh, increase the possibility of uh, irrigation. So, that way uh, we have to see as far as the irrigated land is concerned. Now, if you consider range lands, so the here the livestock production is the priority as far as range land is concerned. So, livestock management reduces uh, risk uh, while rotation of grazing land ensures that um, vegetation cover is uh, preserved. So, uh, range land where the, the we cannot uh, utilize much, much, of, much of this area for the agricultural purposes. So, that we, we can use for livestock production. Uh, so, there say as far as you say for the sustainable land management is concerned we have to see that um, uh, we can implement um, the rotation of grazing. So, that um, the, the uh, grass will be regenerated uh, say if we can go for uh, rotation of grazing racing. Then dry land areas are concerned, dry land areas react with a particular uh, sensitivity to disturbances uh, in the water and uh, biomass cycles. So, regulating and supportive functions are seriously affected by inappropriate management of the soil uh, and the vegetation cover. So, uh, these are some of the issues which we have to deal as uh, multifunctional uh, land use as far as the uh, arid or se semi arid uh, regions are uh, concerned. So, now uh, with, with this uh, perspective within this perspective let us look into the dry land management. So, what we can do as far as the dry land is concerned how effectively uh, we can uh, manage, manage the available lands. So, some of the important uh, things what we can be done are listed here. So, like um, dry land areas react with a particular sensitivity to disturbances in the water and biomass cycles. So, regulating and supportive functions seriously affected by inappropriate management of soil and uh, vegetation cover. So, we should be uh, very careful uh, to see that um, the regulating and supportive functions 
are um, plant uh, properly. And then as far as biomass cycle is concerned, soil organic matter influence on uh, multiple soil functions such as soil biodiversity, uh, fertility, carbon storage, uh, regulation of uh, surface water flows and uh, improved uh, water quality. So, the biomass cycle aspects we have to consider as far as the dry land management is concerned. And then uh, uh, water cycle, so the water availability is uh, very less, so that way we should be very careful. So, reduction of soil cover uh, like um, related to plants, uh, litter and mulch and of soil organic matter, uh, so uh, at the starting point in, uh, in the vicious uh, degradation uh, spiral. So, due, due to drastic disturbance of the uh, water cycle. So, the so within the available water, I mean already in the dry land, say the water weight is uh, say very, very less. So, accordingly, uh, we have to see that uh, within the uh, available water resource, uh, say we have to improve the um, soil moisture, so that um, we can go for uh, say uh, better agricultural uh, practices. And then um, as far as dry land management is concerned, um, so like a sustainable land management practices which we discussed in the previous slide. So, we can utilize this for better soil cover, uh, improve biomass and uh, water cycles and these are the key to uh, improve soil fertility and the water availability as far as the particular area is concerned. And then uh, not illage with uh, controlled uh, traffic uh, and then uh, furrow enhanced uh, runoff like this. Uh, the runoff harvesting and uh, rotational grazing. So, these, these are some of the, uh, the, the issues which we can or with, with the things which we can do as far as uh, dry land management is concerned uh, say within an arid uh, region. So, now uh, say let us look into uh, what are the possible watershed management plans as far as the arid regions are concerned. So, uh, as we discussed uh, the main issues are the, the soil is not fertile, so the uh, land is say land related issues, then uh, we have uh, the water availability is very, very less, so water related problems are there. Then um, the, the uh, say the people uh, say the, their total income is much, much less, so uh, there are so many issues as we discuss. So, within this perspective, so how we can go for better watershed management plans, so uh, let let us uh, look, uh, let us discuss the, these issues. So, uh, as far as watershed management plans are concerned, development of in situ rainwater harvesting techniques. So, that is very important as far as the uh, uh, arid regions are concerned. So, this, uh, so we should uh, look for various practices which require less labor and maintenance and uh, then the cost also should be uh, uh, very less for the considered um, project. And uh, so, uh, we have to see that um, uh, say uh, as far as the particular area is concerned whether we can use the local labor and uh, local available material as far as the uh, various um, uh, water harvesting techniques are concerned. Then development of plant based water uh, absorbing or retaining mat uh, materials. So, uh, so, depending upon the area uh, we can uh, develop the, the some uh, particular types of plants which can absorb uh, water depending upon the uh, say um, uh, rainy season or rain depending upon, for, upon the rain. Uh, so, th this water will be absorbed by the plants and that will be retained. Then initiatives uh, for widespread uh, adoption of uh, rainwater conservation techniques. So, you can see that say for example, this is a dry land area where a number of uh, projects have been implemented as far as the uh, rainwater conservation is concerned like check dams and then um, nala bending uh, etcetera. So, we can look into the, the uh, say a large number of rain, rainwater conservation techniques. Then improvement in traditional water harvesting systems. So, uh, as we discussed earlier say, uh, say water harvesting system was there uh, say for centuries and now uh, say we have to uh, reactivate some of these uh, traditional water harvesting systems which are uh, very much suitable for these uh, uh, arid regions. So, uh, depending upon the locality uh, we can uh, say choose particular uh, say uh, water harvesting system uh, for, for that particular area. Then development of simple uh, windbreak establishment techniques. So, as we discussed 
for most of the arid region uh, the soil erosion due to wind is a major problem. So, uh, say we have to reduce the wind speed so that the soil erosion will be reduced. So, uh, we have to develop simple wind break uh, as, uh, technique like um, say we, we can go for um, say uh, pl plants which can reduce the speed of the wind say on ridges so that uh, uh, that you can reduce the soil erosion problems. And then also we can uh, as uh, say as far as watershed management plans are concerned we can explore the potential of arid zone um, uh, agroforestry as a tool for solving the environmental problem. So, uh, we can go for better um, uh, agroforestry. So, like shown in this uh, photograph. So, uh, so that can solve most of the uh, issues uh, as watershed management plan plants are concerned. Uh, then also we can go for organic farming uh, in virgin arid lands and then another uh, source of income for the uh, local people will be ecotourism. So, in ecotourism means say we can develop the particular arid region, particular arid village and then um, we can give uh, facilities for the local or international tourists uh, so that um, uh, the local people can earn money through uh, various means. So, ecotourism is one of the important aspect which we can promote in, in many of the uh, areas. So, now uh, say let us look into what are the possible watershed management practices as far as the uh, arid regions are uh, concerned. So, uh, say depending upon the how say we, we as far as the arid region is concerned um, as we classified most of the time the average annual rainfall will be uh, less than 500 uh, mm. So, accordingly uh, say depending upon how much rainfall is available. So, we can uh, go for particular uh, watershed management practice for the uh, considered area. So, few of the uh, say, say possible practices are listed here and uh, discussed. So, first one uh, is um, uh, runoff farming. So, uh, here say depending upon the, the rainfall conditions. So, here we can go for runoff farming. So, this is a system of growing crops on harvested and stored water in the farm um, by earthen dam or burn across the gentle slope of the farmland. Uh, so, uh, this is um, uh, so in this uh, say uh, runoff farming. So, the shallow gravelly and uh, rocky uplands. So, like this rocky uplands, shallow regions. So, this we can uh, this area we can uh, keep for grazing and then uh, uh, we can harvest the runoff water coming from the uplands uh, in using um, uh, say uh, using various water harvesting techniques uh, say and then we can collect the area collect the water. So, water collecting area then uh, we can use go for contour bands uh, say that means say using channels according to the contour then moisture storage basins then inbounding mechanism like bands, spillways and sluice and a zone uh, for uh, cultivators settlement. So, like this say if the rainfall uh, is say somewhat good like uh, say, uh, say uh, 300 to 500 uh, mm uh, per annum then uh, we can go for uh, better farming practices and then we can go for the uh, say various uh, uh, rainwater harvesting schemes and then we can classify the the land use as far as the upper land uh, then uh, low land is concerned and low land we can use for uh, farming and then uh, uh, people settlement and then upper land we can go for um, 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 grazing and then also we can use it for the the uh, say rainwater harvesting uh, as far as the particular areas concerned. So, that is uh, what is known as runoff farming. So, then uh, uh, the areas where the rainfall uh, is uh, say for example, below 200 mm per year. So, that we, we can go for a, a, a scheme called the silvi uh, pasture. So, here the silvi pasture is, pasture is used in areas for rainfall below 200 mm per year and the food production is uh, very difficult in this region. So, on the other hand there are some uh, grass species uh, which will be growing in this uh, uh, area. Uh, so, uh, for example, this Sengrus silaria so like that this scientific names of some of the grass species and these are well adapted to such climates and make um, natural uh, rangelands. So, the tree species like um, uh, Prospopis uh, cinerea and um, uh, say 
Sisyphus numeraria uh, come up in this uh, rangelands. So, this kinds of plants grows in this area and makes a silvy pastoral system. So, this say once th this type of plants um, or grass species grows in the area. So, then we call uh, such a system as silvy pastoral system and then um, animals like cows, goats and sheep are part of this farming system. So, this animals can uh, graze in this region and then the animal products uh, say like milk, um, eggs, meat etcetera uh, can be used by the, the uh, local people. So, that will be their major income. So, here we can see that um, this is a, a good example of sustainable management. So, uh, depending upon the area since the rainfall is very low. Uh, so, we utilize the, 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 uh, the plantations, uh, possible plantations and then grass species and then depending upon that we uh, say grow the, the animals uh, and then we get the income from these uh, animals. So, that is so called a silvy pasture. And then uh, another, another uh, uh, say system is called agri silvy culture. So, this is mainly uh, a popular system in areas of rainfall between 200 to 400 uh, mm per year. So, people protect naturally germinated seedlings uh, of useful trees uh, like um, P. cinerea, then uh, Z. numelaria like that. Uh, so, uh, these trees come up in crop fields and then uh, we can go for mixed cropping of pearl millet mud bean, cluster bean uh, and uh, sesame uh, these are all carried out under these trees. So, you can see that big trees will be there like in this photograph and then small plants like uh, beans, uh, pepper millet etcetera can be grown under the shade of these uh, trees. So, these trees do not uh, compete with the crops, but complementary in terms of improving the micro environment. So, that is so called uh, agri silviculture system. And then the uh, last one is uh, so called uh, agri horticulture system. So, uh, say uh, throughout the world um, number of uh, research studies were conducted and based on experiments in research farms and farmers fields. A new agri horticulture system of uh, say so called uh, jujube uh, say it is uh, in scientific name CC first Mauritania. Uh, so, uh, jujube intercropped with um, uh, arid legumes like uh, cluster bean, mud bean, green gram, uh, uh, these are developed for areas receiving rainfall of um, more than 250 mm per year and agri horticulture system found to give better and uh, uh, earlier production. Uh, uh, so, that we can go for year round work and uh, this will be resilience to erratic uh, rainfall. So, this is so called uh, agri horticulture system uh, which are possible in uh, arid region. And also say like um, as far as the watershed management practices are concerned, we can go for lay farming. So, uh, say, say for example, lay farming the concept behind lay farming is on one piece of land, a rotation of um, grasses for 4 to 6 years are implemented followed by food grain crops like um, uh, pepper, pepper millet of legumes for 2 3 years and then land is left fallow for 2 3 years and whole farm is divided into parts in such a way that every year all these three practices uh, we can uh, uh, continue. So, like uh, grass production, crop production and fallow are available in one or another part of the land. So, this uh, system is called a lay farming system. And then as far as the major problem of like soil erosion due to winds, we can develop wind breaks or um, shelter belts. So, wind erosion, high thermal regime and um, hot uh, desiccating winds serious problem in the arid regions. So, here we can have a mixture of trees and shrubs planted across the wind direction like uh, shown uh, here. So, in, in reducing the wind speed. So, this is another uh, watershed mining practice in uh, arid region. So, now uh, say let us look into various techniques which we can uh, utilize in terms of engineer techniques or structural technologies uh, as far as arid and semi arid regions are concerned. Some of the important uh, say um, engineering um, technologies are listed here as far as watershed management is concerned. 
for the arid or semi arid regions. So, uh, this uh, this uh, technologies include uh, like a side hill ditches or um, similar diversion structures. So, um, uh, this we can use uh, a non arable land from cultivated uh, land below. Then uh, we can go for contour bending uh, or ridges as we discussed uh, as far as uh, say uh, watershed management practice is concerned. So, these are built along the contour as part of the crop field. Then uh, grassed waterways, so which carry away runoff that has been channel, cha channeled uh, by condo structures. Uh, then uh, we can say go for terraces like this, we can have terraces. So, radical conversion of slope land into series of graded steps. Then we can go for small scale terracing depending upon the area. Then also we can go for micro basins like we can have pits or half moon structures uh, say as part of um, rainwater harvesting. And then we can go for uh, gully plugs like uh, barriers built perpendicular to a slope across uh, drainage ways. So, these are some of the engineering or structure technologies which are possible as far as uh, arid or semi arid regions are concerned. And then uh, also we can uh, give a vegetative treatment measures as far as the uh, arid or semi arid regions are concerned like some of the important vegetative treatment possible in the areas arid regions are listed here like a strip cropping or condo farming, then uh, leaving barriers and then leguminous cover crops, then uh, zero low tillage, then adjustment to agronomic practices like improved plant spacing and appropriate crop rotation including intercropping. Then we can go for compost application like improve the organic matter content of the soil then uh, we can go, go for agroforestry uh, practices. So, these are some of the vegetative treatment uh, measures as far as the uh, arid regions are uh, concerned. So, uh, with this uh, now uh, say uh, what we have discussed so far is say what are the possible watershed management uh, plans as far as the arid or semi arid regions are concerned. So, there are unique problems uh, as far as the uh, say the uh, uh, arid or semi arid regions are concerned and then uh, we can have unique solutions also depending upon the area depending upon the uh, precipitation available for the particular uh, area. So, now uh, let us go to the se second section uh, in this lecture so called um, uh, say watershed management strategies and strategic planning. Uh, so, here we will discuss uh, not for arid regions, but uh, in a holistic way what are the important uh, watershed strategies uh, as far as watershed management is concerned and um, uh, what is strategic planning. So, here as uh, discussed here uh, say overall goal for watershed management is elevation of poverty and uh, upgrading of living standards by means of sustainable development of water, uh, water resources and conservation of the environment. So, all the resources we are uh, uh, say developing uh, in a sustainable way, so that we can uh, elevate the poverty uh, and then upgrade the living standards of the people. So, the overall goal incorporates uh, basically uh, three uh, mission goals, say first one is manage, develop. Uh, and protect water and uh, related resources to meet needs of current and future generations. So, this is the first goal. Then second one is operate, uh, maintain and rehabilitate facilities safely, reliably, uh, efficiently to protect the public investments. So, th this is the second uh, goal. And third one is enhance the organizational effectiveness of the water resource coordination system. Uh, promote capacity building uh, and uh, like uh, people participation. So, these are some of the uh, important overall goals uh, as far as any watershed uh, management uh, planning is concerned uh, or say strategic planning of watershed management is concerned. So, now uh, uh, with this uh, uh, say uh, goals, so we can uh, say, say depending upon the say if you consider a particular uh, state or particular district or particular region, uh, we can uh, study the various issues for the particular region and then uh, we can go for strategic planning uh, as far as watershed management is concerned. So, as part of strategic planning in watershed management. So, first we can identify uh, the priority of the watershed, priority of the watershed. So, 
if there are so many watershed uh, for the region then we can prioritize which watershed we have to uh, do first um, intervention uh, like that. Then priority for watershed with critical conditions. So, we can study the watershed which one is which one is uh, uh, say deteriorated or which watershed has more problems. So, that way uh, we can uh, prioritize and then uh, we can see the population of that region so and their economical status and then uh, we can uh, intervene and then storage say as far as the water issues are concerned for that particular region so on watershed basis we can go for strategic planning as far as reservoir developments uh, water intake or diversion dams or water harvesting techniques uh, so, th and then uh, as far as various resources are concerned, we can make best of the available resources for that particular area. Then uh, uh, say uh, another important issue will be soil erosion. So, uh, say as we discussed earlier, the same the soil erosion reduces the fertility of the area. So, we have to control the soil erosion. So, we can go for conservation of the soil. Then agriculture productivity, say, say if the productivity is very low, how we can improve it. Then uh, say what kind of uh, say uh, a particular area say either using the optimal water use or optimal agriculture practices, how we can improve the income of the people. And in all this in strategy planning, we can take the people uh, participation uh, and then we can do stakeholder analysis and then uh, we can take their opinion also. So, in all this uh, our main uh, aim will be poverty alleviation uh, as far as the uh, the particular area is concerned. So, now uh, say as far as watershed management strategies are concerned. So, uh, as we seen the, the uh, as we seen the previous slide the strategic plans we can uh, say we can prioritize and then make the plans. So, first we can set the objectives then uh, we can uh, choose the strategies to implement then implementation can be by individuals government or various groups or NGOs. So, as, as we discussed earlier the strategies can be either preventive strategies or restorative strategies. So, preventive strategies means uh, preserving the existing sustainable land use practices. So, and then establish and sustain preventive measures including land use practices. And then restorative strategies means to overcome identified problems or to restore conditions in a watershed to a uh, desirable uh, level. So, preventive strategies we do it to so that um, the watershed is not deteriorated uh, as far as the resources are concerned. Then restorative strategies we identify say, particular problems and then go for uh, to improve that uh, problems. So, now depending upon the uh, say area depending upon the problem depending upon the watershed. So, we can uh, identify the problems and then uh, uh, we can uh, look into possible alternative solutions and then uh, say we can look into the, the objectives as far as watershed management is concerned. So, here uh, various problems are listed and corresponding possible alternative solutions are also listed and then what will be the corresponding objective. Say for example, if the, if the watershed is concerned deficient water supply is there, then uh, we can go for reservoir storage and transfer. So, um, uh, effectively we have to look reduce the sedimentation, then we can go for water harvesting. So, this can be improve, this can improve localized collection and storage. Then we can reduce the evapotranspiration that may lead to say we have to go for deep root to shallow rooted plants. Then uh, say for example, in some region we can go for cloud seeding that may give more rainfall and then uh, some regions depending upon the ground water availability we can pump from aquifer and then obviously we have to have watershed management is concerned we have to go for recharge. So, if there are the problem is related to flooding, then we have to see that re like reservoir storage, then uh, revegetation, re revegetation, then uh, construct uh, levees, etc. Then corresponding minimize sedimentation, sedimentation, then uh, plan more vegetation. So, similarly, energy storage is concerned, utilize wood for fuel, uh, then hydropower, then uh, food shortage is concerned, develop agroforestry, increase cultivation. So, like that depending upon the area, depending upon the st strategic plans, we can go for to, to deal with a particular problem, we can choose alternative solutions uh, and then depending upon the area, we can go for that. So, similarly erosion uh, or, or sedimentation, we can go for erosion control, so that we can construct various structures, then uh, poor quality of drinking water, we can uh, treat water supplied, uh, then uh, polluted stream we can control the pollutants. 
then uh, reduced fisheries production, we can treat uh, waste water. So, like that various aspects are possible. So, now as far as the typical watershed management strategies are concerned, so this depends upon the area, this depends upon the resources available and uh, this depends upon the, the various issues, various problems for the particular region. So, for example, here say the typical watershed management strategy is possible, say it, uh, it is based on rainfall, temperature, soil, topography, cropping and uh, farming systems. Uh, so, say for example, India is concerned. So, if you take the case of India, so if you consider western Himalayan region uh, like uh, Jammu Kashmir, uh, Hari, uh, Uttar Pradesh, Himalaya Pradesh etcetera. So, the thrust will be water conservation and use uh, so that we can go for land use planning, crop diversification etcetera. Then if you consider eastern Himalayan regions like Sikkim, Darjeeling etcetera, the thrust will be soil and water conservation so that we can improve the uh, farming systems the, and then uh, lower Gangetic plains are concerned. Uh, the issues are frequent floods, poor water management, we can go for irrigation development, crop productivity, uh, uh, improvement of livestock etcetera. So, then eastern uh, uh, plateau hills like Madhya Pradesh is concerned, we have to go for water conservation. Then south uh, plateau hills are concerned, we have to go for rain fed farming. Uh, so, the thrust will be irrigation development, crop management. Then Gujarat region is concerned, it is a rich zone, less rainfall, so we have to go for water conservation, dry land farms, water management, etc. So, western dry region like Rajasthan, we have to go for uh, say, uh, say here the, we have to go for like today what we discussed for dry, dry land management, so water harvesting and other uh, related uh, issues. So, now say for example, if you consider typical watershed management strategy say uh, under the umbrella of Rajiv Gandhi watershed mission. So, uh, the government of India has implemented uh, many schemes in various states say for example, in Madhya Pradesh this is a mission under the nodal agency at district level uh, where a mission leader will be district collector and then uh, the various input from district watershed technical committees. Uh, and then uh, district watershed advisory committees are considered and then uh, the project implementation will be by government agency or non government agencies and then uh, it, the, the implementation projects can be through village watershed committees like user group and then water related user group, land related user group. Uh, so, that um, the, there will be a watershed association will be there who controls uh, overall project implementation. So, that way the watershed strategies we can uh, uh, say develop and then uh, implement. So, before closing uh, for today's lecture, let us briefly discuss a case study as far as the, the watershed management in arid region is concerned. The case study is from Desert Rainwater Harvesting Initiative from Western Rajasthan. So, here the main issue was say uh, water availability. So, this, this is a sustainable model for drought affected areas. So, uh, this is mainly implemented in uh, western Rajasthan. Uh, so, here uh, the, the NGO uh, they are concentrating upon rainwater harvesting measures in the particular area is concerned. So, the grassroots projects are aimed at elevating poverty and providing a reliable water supply. Outcome of initiative involve formation of global partnerships, establishment of a center to promote rainwater harvesting. Uh, so, then uh, rainwater harvesting solutions. So, that is the main thing you can see that say for example, one particular village. So, here the rainwater harvestings were constructed and then after a uh, few years you can see that there is good storage of water and the area, the phase of that area is totally changed. Uh, so, this has been implemented by the NGOs uh, with the people participation. So, this uh, desert rainwater harvesting initiative created in response to increasing water crisis uh, facing in this um, Rajasthan region. So, initiative aims uh, year round supply of fresh water uh, for rural communities in drought affected areas and lead partner uh, has a long standing presence in the area and village uh, uh, water action uh, planning committee they are managing uh, and uh, developing the system with the help of uh, the, organ, uh, the NGO. The NGO is called International uh, Sri Deep uh, uh, Mahavandana uh, Ashram Fellowship. So, they launched this initiative. So, this um, NGOs utilize the traditional rainwater harvesting techniques in the area in conjunction with uh, community based watershed management plans to provide sustainable model to be used in drought affected areas. 
So, uh, say village ag water action planning committee called the community based water management system is generated. And uh, after implementing uh, say this project so called desert rainwater harvesting initiative say by considering many of the rainwater harvesting techniques what we discussed today. So, it, it is observed many of the village say there is sufficient water is available and many villages become self sufficient in water and food. So, this project has become a huge success in many of the villages and then this has changed the face of the um, face of many villages and now still uh, this program is going on in many of the uh, villages. So, you can see that uh, the rainwater harvesting initiative for the region, arid regions uh, say once it is implemented with uh, the help of the uh, people participation uh, the, the uh, there is huge success and then uh, it has become a um, sustainable uh, watershed management uh, project. So, some of the important references used in today's uh, lecture lecture are listed here. So, before closing say one tutorial questions uh, related to today's lecture illustrate the typical watershed management strategies in different agroclimatic regions of India. So, we have seen uh, uh, different agroclimatic regions of India in earlier lecture also. So, we can identify the, the depending upon the, the various conditions the agroclimatic region and then we can identify the states and then uh, we can uh, say look into the thrust areas and uh, uh, discuss the possible watershed management plans for that particular uh, region is concerned. So, as self evaluation questions, uh, some four questions are listed here. What are the land and water related problems in arid regions? What are the major challenges related to watershed management in arid regions? Discuss dry land management in arid regions and illustrate uh, watershed management strategies for various uh, problems. So, this all discussed uh, in today's lecture and some of the assignment questions like differentiate between drought and aridity illustrate soil erosion processes, what are the important issues in arid regions, what are different types of water erosion, discuss each type, what is the scope of integrated watershed management uh, in arid regions, discuss the, the importance of strategic planning in watershed management. So, this, uh, this questions related answers already available in this in today's lecture. So, finally, an unsolved problem for, for an uh, arid region of average annual rainfall of less than 250 mm, you can take a particular case study and prepare watershed management plan for integrated sustainable development. So, uh, as we discussed you can identify the various problem for the considered area then we can find out different options uh, of sustainable land management. Uh, so, that uh, say we can improve the water availability then we can improve the agriculture productions and then uh, uh, we uh, you can look into various uh, issues to reduce soil or wind erosions and then uh, we can you can suggest some scientific methods for uh, soil conservation for the particular area considered. So, with this um, uh, this uh, module 2 is over. So, uh, say today we discussed mainly on the uh, the watershed management practices in arid and semi arid regions and then uh, the various strategies as far as watershed management is concerned. Thank you.